Desert Research Institute is presenting its Nevada Medal to a world-renowned scientist. Farouk el helped land the Apollo astronauts safely on the moon. But surprisingly, that's only one of his accomplishments. He's also responsible for things like giving people in a small Egyptian village water. And here is a moment in time where here's a whole bunch of people that you don't know. You don't know any of them. They barely know your name. And you will never see them again. And you have made life possible for them. El Bays will formally get his award tonight at the DRI dinner at the Reno Hilton. By the way, El Bays believes the United States should continue its pursuit of sending a manned mission to... And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad and Andy Engelman. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are delighted to welcome uh, the Nevada medal winner uh, presented by DRI this year. Once again, uh, Farouk Elbaz, who is a doctor, and it's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, just a brief explanation here, uh, he's highly regarded uh, as the director of uh, the Center for Remote Sensing and uh, renowned for his contributions to the understanding of the origin and evolution of desert landforms. Um, I've got to start right off the top. Front page of the New York Times today, the story came out yesterday. Images from the Hubble telescope reveal the deepest glance into the universe, back in time to be within a stone's throw of the Big Bang itself. That has got to be the most astonishing story, perhaps in our lifetime. It really is. It is uh, most wonderful that we have the uh, Hubble telescope in uh, Earth orbit looking beyond what we see from the Earth, because it's eyeballs rather than all of other satellites, their eyeballs are looking down. But the Hubble is looking up and expanding our view of the universe. And now we see the, to the edge of the universe where we, we see to the very beginnings of the formation of the universe, including our solar system. It's something that it's, it's mind boggling. That's wonderful. Well, and tens of thousands of galaxies. I, no, I mean... no, billions and billions. And each galaxy may have billions of stars. The numbers are vast. How do, how do you accept? I, I can't accept numbers that large. Well, it really is very difficult to perceive all of that. And uh, even when we looked at any planetary body by itself, when we started looking at the moon and counted the craters that came from impact by meteorites, the numbers are mind-boggling. You go to Mars and you do the same thing, and the numbers are also mind-boggling. How many meteorites could have been to form all of these craters in all of these planetary bodies? So the numbers in the universe are really beyond the comprehension of us mortal human beings. Well, yeah, you're you, not no, mortal no, wait, human no, wait, being. You need to pay homage and explain to Trekkies why this man's name is familiar. Okay, okay. well, not only was he featured in the Tom Hanks show uh, From the Earth to the Moon uh, on HBO, but also there was a shuttle in Star Trek The Next Generation that actually had your name on it, correct? That's right. How did you find out about it? And it's wonderful. I was really actually in my uh, office and uh, and uh, a graduate student of mine said, uh, did you see Star Trek, The Next Generation? I said, no. He said, uh, well, they have uh, something with your name on it, and they do. They write it exactly the same way with E-L and hyphen B-A-Z. And then he smiled and laughed, and I thought he was joking. <laughs> and then a friend of mine from NASA calls me up the same day, and he says, hey, Farouk, now we can get all of the books and all of the papers you've been slaving over and throw them out the window. I said, what are, what are you talking about? He said, I'm telling you, man, get all of this stuff that you're working on and throw it out in the trash. You've made it. I said, what do you mean? He said, your name is on Star Trek. <laughs> and, and the story of how it came, it's really fantastic, too. Because during the Apollo years in 1971, there was a camera crew that uh, came to photograph us, training the astronauts. And they were with us for three days. There was a cameraman, a lights man, and the sound man. The sound man was a little short kid who was very delightful and very interested in, the, in the, the lunar features and kept on every time we stopped he would ask me about the features of the moon and I explained it to him. And that year I had uh, published a book on lunar surface features. I gave him a copy because he was interested and autographed it. This man Life became good to him, and he became executive producer of Star Trek Next Generation. Oh. And he named it. Thank you. Sorry. Oh. Right, now, I, I want to ask a question about inner space. Yes. Okay. Uh, we live in a desert area yes. here in Nevada. Of course, you're in Boston, which has a ton of water, so, you know. But I know that in ancient times, the city of Masada survived on 16 days of rain, mostly by filling the large jugs and, and portioning out the water. What, what, is that what we in arid climates are going to need to do one of these days in order to survive? Do we have any way of finding water underneath our deserts here? Even though I live in Boston, I hail from Egypt. 
and Egypt is in the driest place on earth. And uh, the dryness of the deserts of today is something peculiar that happens once in a while. All of these dry lands in the world, the Sahara, the Arabian Desert, the Taklimakan of China, all of these deserts were not as dry as they are today only 5,000 years ago. Between 5,000 years ago and 11,000 years ago, they were absolutely wet. Well, wet climates prevailed. There were lakes, rivers, and there was a savanna-like environment. There were animals all over the place, and man roamed the terrain. So it was really different. And before that, that was a dry cycle. Before the dry cycle, there was another wet cycle between 25,000 and 35,000. Before that, another dry, and so on. So these are cycles, in natural cycles, dry and wet and dry and wet. So we, in desert areas, look forward to a wet cycle coming in the future. When do we know when, when? that's coming? <laughs> <laughs> this actually, this, you, did, you did exactly like President Sadat did. <laughs> After, as soon as we figured this out, I was working as science advisor to President Anwar Sadat, and, and I told him this story, and he said, well, Farouk, this means that the rain is going to come back again. I said, yes, Mr. President. He said, when? <laughs> <laughs> I've got one last question for you, Farouk. Um, you know, the president wants us to go to Mars. We're seeing uh, that the Hubble uh, spacecraft, or, or telescope rather, may be allowed to, to shut down because they say it's too dangerous to sell shuttle, uh, send shuttles there. What, what's your feelings about this? Where, where should our money be directed for the yeah. future of space exploration? There is no question about the fact that the a goal like reaching Mars is a wonderful goal and it can tie the whole organization together and for an objective that they can reach and they feel good about doing it. The way Apollo did it for us. But in the meantime, I really don't think that this should be at the cost of other things, and particularly the Hubble telescope. The Hubble telescope has expanded our mind and our vision of the universe tremendously, and that should be supported. We don't have to send the shuttle to the Hubble telescope or the space station. We can figure out other simpler uh, launch vehicles to go and, and uh, sub supply the shuttle and s uh, supply the, uh, the telescope as well as the uh, space station. So I really think we should not limit ourselves with what the leftover shuttles can do. We can expand our minds and do it differently. Uh, Dr. Farouk el -Baz, what a pleasure to meet you. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. much for being on the program. Thank you very much. And Thank come you. back Thank any you. time because we want to talk about the Apollo program that Good. we're involved in too. Thank we'll you. be right back <laughs> on the Nevada Newsmakers after this. Nevada might have a lot more fresh water than any of us can imagine, according to, according to one of the world's leading experts on satellite imaging technology. Dr. Farouk El Baz is being awarded the Desert Research Institute's prestigious Nevada Medal here in Las Vegas tonight. It recognizes his cutting-edge work in the discovery of underground water resources. Dr. El Baz is best known for his work with NASA's Apollo program, which sent men to the moon. Today he spoke with Channel 8's George Knapp about water, Mars, and the future exploration of space. All engines run. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. In the heady days of the Apollo program, few scientists in the world were better known than Farouk El Baz. It was El Baz who prepared American astronauts for the bleak lunar terrain. He did it in part by visiting the Nevada test site as well as Area 51 to study craters created during atomic explosions. Nevada's craters helped NASA decide where to land when men got to the moon. El Baz became a scientific celebrity and even had a shuttlecraft named for him in a Star Trek TV series. The space program today is but a shell of its former self, but El Baz is mighty jazzed about the current missions to Mars, in part for personal reasons. Some of these people are colleagues of mine, some of them are my students. His former students are guiding the Mars rovers as the little robots probe the surface of the red planet. Appropriately enough, their most profound achievement to date is the confirmation that Mars once had water. Was there water on Mars? The question, the answer is yes. Is there water on Mars now? We most likely not, but we don't know for sure. If there was water on Mars, could there have been life on Mars? We will check with you later. <laughs> El Baz is thrilled to see so much public interest in the Mars missions because he still champions a vigorous space program, both for what we can learn out there and for practical scientific benefits on Earth. 
The lukewarm public reaction of President Bush's proposed space initiative occurred, he thinks, because there was no specific goal, as there was during Apollo. Space technology has made it possible for El Baz to pursue new methods for finding underground water supplies in arid regions, like his native Egypt or, say, the parched deserts of Nevada. Using satellites and something called imaging radar, the El Baz team can see through desert sand, get a glimpse of what the Earth looked like in eons past, and calculate where all the water went. It's worked everywhere he's used the technique, and that's good news for a thirsty planet. I actually suspect that there's a great deal of more of groundwater than we ever thought. Now, what in, we see in the rivers and the lakes may be 2% of the fresh water. The real fresh water is down underneath the Earth. Locating resources way down there is only possible because of exploration way up here. El Baz thinks both are worthy pursuits. George Knapp, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Very interesting. Dr. El Baz serves on the faculty of Boston University. He is the 17th recipient of the Nevada Medal. You're watching the News Leader, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Nevada might have a lot more fresh water than any of us can imagine. That's according to one of the world's leading experts on satellite imaging technology. Tonight in Las Vegas, Dr. Farouk El Baz will be awarded the prestigious Nevada Medal by the Desert Research Institute for his cutting edge work in the discovery of underground water resources. Dr. El Baz is best known for his work with NASA in the Apollo program that sent men to the moon. He spoke today with I-Team reporter George Knapp about water, Mars, and the future of space exploration. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. In the heady days of the Apollo program, he thinks both are worthy pursuits. George Knapp, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Dr. El Baz, who is on the faculty of Boston University, is the 17th recipient of the DRI's Nevada Medal for Scientific Achievement. The award comes with a $20,000 honorarium. Kevin Jennison and I will have the pleasure of co-hosting tonight's awards presentation at Caesar Palace. You're watching the number one 11 p.m. newscast in Las Vegas. Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 11 with Dave Gervasier, Paula Francis, Neighborhood Weather with Kevin Jennison, and Sports with Dave McCann. Channel 8 Eyewitness News. One of Nevada's premier scientific organizations tonight honored a pioneer in the space program. The Desert Research Institute held its annual awards dinner in honor of Professor Farouk El Baz, the man who led the program to select landing sites for the Apollo moon mission. His recent work has involved the discovery of underground sources of fresh water. Kevin and I were pleased to host the event at Caesars Palace. DRI is recognized worldwide for environmental research. He has done so much yes. for us in our search for water here. You guys look good up there. Oh.